In this video, we are going to learn about dynamic components in Svelte. Dynamic components is a concept that is best understood with some background. So let's first understand the scenario we are looking at implementing for our example. In a web application, you might often need to create a tabbed user interface. For example, you would have three tab buttons at the top and below the tab, you would have some content. But the content is controlled by clicking on the individual tab buttons. If you click on the tab A button, tab A content is displayed. Click on tab B button, the corresponding content would be displayed and if you click on tab C button, the corresponding content again would be displayed. Let's try to implement this in our Svelte application. I'm going to begin by creating three new components in the components folder. Tab A dot Svelte, Tab B dot Svelte, and Tab C dot Svelte. Within the Tab A dot Svelte file, let me add some text as markup. Tab A content. And I'm going to copy paste this code into the other two files as well. Tab B and Tab C. Next, let's add the tabbed user interface in the app component. First, let's import all the three components. Tab A, Tab B, and Tab C from their corresponding files. Next, let's add the app component markup. For the tabbed buttons, let's add three buttons. Tab A, Tab B, and Tab C. Next, let's invoke the three components. All right, if you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we have the tab buttons, but all the three components are being rendered as the content. Let's go back and make changes to ensure only the active tab is being displayed. In the script section, add a new variable called active tab and set it to tab A. So let active tab is equal to tab A. On each of the buttons on click, let's update the active tab. So on click, active tab is equal to tab A. Similarly, active tab is equal to tab B and active tab is equal to tab C. Finally, on the individual components, let's add a condition. If active tab is equal to tab A, render tab A component. If active tab is equal to tab B, render tab B component. Finally, if active tab is equal to tab C, render tab C component. So the appropriate tab is rendered based on the active tab value, which is controlled by the button click. If we save the file and take a look at the browser, by default, tab A is the active tab and its content is displayed. Click on tab B and the content changes and the same with tab C as well. We are able to change the content based on the active tab. Although this works great, you'll start to realize this is not the right approach if we have a lot of components that we have to switch between. You would need to include every single component in the markup and for each component, add the if block to conditionally render it. For example, if you have a multi-step form where each form is presented under a tab, it is quite possible that you might have eight to 10 tabs easily. 
To help in this scenario, Svelte provides us with a special element. Let's understand its syntax and usage. Let me comment out the component tags to begin with. Next, in the markup, we are going to include a Svelte specific HTML tag, which is Svelte colon component. The role of this tag is to render a Svelte component. And the way we inform this tag what component to render is by setting this attribute. To the attribute, we bind a component. For our scenario, the component has to be dynamically set based on the button click. So begin by changing active tab to reference the actual component rather than the string. Tab A, tab B and tab C without the quotes. In the script section, the initial value is the tab A component. Now to this attribute on the swelled colon component special element, we assign active tab. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, our UI still works as expected. But this time we have written lesser code. So that is about dynamic components in Svelte. When you have a requirement to switch between components, you can make use of the Svelte colon component special element with this attribute to inform Svelte of the component that has to be rendered in the UI. Dynamic components also reduce the amount of code you have to write, thereby making it easier to maintain your code in the long run. One last point I would like to mention here is about special elements in Svelte. In this video, we had a look at Svelte colon component element, but let me tell you that it isn't the only special element available to us. We have a few others which I want to talk about very briefly in this video. We have Svelte colon self, which allows a component to contain itself recursively. We have Svelte colon window, which lets you add event listeners to the window object and Svelte colon body, which lets you listen for events that fire on the document body. We then have Svelte colon head, which allows you to insert elements inside the head of your document. Lastly, we have Svelte colon options, which lets you specify compiler options. The Svelte colon component element is something I feel needed a bit of explanation for practical usage and hence this video. The use case for the other special elements is very specific and you might not often require them in your application. So I wanted to ensure you're aware of these elements, but please do explore yourselves their usage based on the app requirements. All right then. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video.